Hello, everyone. Welcome in. Welcome in. Hello. I hope everyone is having a beautiful Monday morning or afternoon or evening, depending on your time zone. Uh, this class is being recorded and there is a transcript going on. So you can turn that off by just clicking the X that will turn that right off for you. Um, we are recording this class. If you have any questions as we go throughout the class, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A. I have Joy and Lindsay from Cricket on our back end, um, helping to answer all of those questions and give you guys any guidance you need along the way. If you're having any technical issues with Zoom, volume, what you're seeing, anything like that, please go ahead and direct message Felicia. She can help you out with any technical problems. So the way the class is going to is structured, we'll do some slides and that will allow us to go into a broad overview of Cricut Design Space. Then we will move into Design Space Live where if you have uh, Design Space open, you can work with me. And lastly, we will go and create the project together. Now, if you do wanna work with me, I recommend you go ahead and open up Design Space now, just in case it's been a while, maybe there's an upgrade or anything like that, that just might need some couple minutes to run in the background and you're ready to go with us when we get started. Um, I think that's everything to get started with. And don't forget, it is being recorded. You'll get an opportunity to view the recording. So if you miss something or you, you know, want to go back and view it, you absolutely can at any time. All right, let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is work on those slides and talk a little bit about um, Cricut and all of the different, um, the different machines that are available to you to work with. Now, as we're going along, hopefully we've, we've thought of all the questions you might ask um, and we will touch on those. But again, if you have questions along the way, um, please drop those in the Q&A. That's where we will see them to be able to answer to you. Now, Cricut offers three different families of machines. The Cricut Joy is the smallest, I think the cutest machine out there. It cuts a four and a half inch width. Um, it's small enough to fit in a cubby hole. It travels really easily. The Cricut Joy was the first machine to work with smart materials, meaning vinyl and iron on vinyl that cuts without using a mat. The Cricut Explore Air cuts wider, cuts 11 and a half inches. It is by far our most popular machine. And then um, for those DIY mavericks out there, we have the Cricut Maker. The Cricut Maker is different from the other two machines in that its blades work on a gear system. So you have more blades that you can interchange with, and it also allows for more pressure when cutting. So your material options increase um, with the Cricut Maker. So speaking of materials, the Cricut Joy cuts up to 50 different materials. Explore Air cuts three, uh, excuse me, Explore Air cuts 100, around 100 materials, maybe a little bit more. And the Cricut Maker will cut over 300 different materials. So depending on what your project is that you're working on or your craft, we have a machine that will work for you. All of the machines work with our, um, oops, not advancing, let me get that going. All of our machines work with something called Design Space. If you'd like to work, learn more about the machines, you can check out learn.cricket.com. Now, Design Space works with all the three different types of machines, the Cricut Joy, an Explorer, or a Maker. It also works across multiple platforms. So you can use Design Space on a desktop or a laptop, a tablet device, or a phone device. All you need to get started is your Cricut ID. So Cricut ID is a unique ID for you. It works with all the machines you use and it works across the different platforms. So let's say you have a desktop and a tablet device and maybe you own a Cricut a Joy or a Maker, and you want to work with both of them on both devices, you can do all of that with one Cricut ID. Now, your Cricut ID also gives you access to Design Space and Cricut Access. Cricut Access is the content 
um, available to you from Cricut, from and by Cricut. So with Cricut Access, we have multiple plans. You can do a free plan, a standard plan, or a premium plan, and each plan has its perks and benefits. With the free plan, um, you have the base access to design space and some images and fonts to work with. And then if you upgrade to the standard plan, you have access to the incredible full library of Cricut-based content. You also get a 10% discount on licensed images and some other perks along the way. And then the premium um, account does give you a couple more perks. So whatever, wherever you come into Cricut, we have a plan that meets your needs. Now let's talk a little bit more about this design space. Design space is the software that takes your ideas from, from your fingers, from your head, from your heart, puts it into your device, your system, and then translates and communicates that to your cutter. So when you come into design space, when you come into the home page, it's set up to easily guide you through um, what you wanna create or where you need to go. So I've highlighted some of my the, the parts of Design Space homepage that are important and relevant to a beginner. This first section here is your header bar. And on the header bar, you have to the left side, these three stacked pancakes here, or, or hamburger bar. <laughs> um, this is where you can access your profile. Now, there's not too much that I do in the profile, but it does allow you to toggle between the home screen and the canvas. It's also where you can change your settings and set up a new machine. So those are the main things that I do in the profile, but you should definitely explore those different lines and see what else, what else you can do in the profile section. Below the profile section is the a carousel of images. Now this will always be changing and rotating. It will give you up to the minute ideas seasonally. Um, if there's new products coming out, it'll give you ideas on what you can do with those new products. Below that is where all of your projects that you've saved will, will be stored and where you can access your projects. And then below that, we have this great playlist of Videos, these are little vignette videos, three minutes, some are shorter, um, that really just give you a, a very specific information. So if you need to learn how to apply transfer tape or what to do when you're weeding, you can go check out one of these quick short videos that highlights and speaks directly to that topic. Then below that is the community of inspiration. Now you will get so inspired by all the projects that are available in the community. There are community members just like you or me who put up ideas and projects that they've made that we can all access and do. And then there's also an entire community um, behind Cricut that puts up projects that you can create. Now, when you're ready to get started and go into the canvas, you click on the new project and that will take you into your canvas. For those of you that are on a tablet device or a phone device, it is a little bit different in your setup. So if you want to go toggle between your home screen and your canvas, it's this um, icon right here up in the upper right corner where you just click on it. I wanna go to my home screen or my canvas. And then on your uh, tablet device, because you just don't have as much screen real estate space as we do on a desktop or a laptop, all of your icons, instead of being on the side, are along the bottom. So on the left bottom is the design panel, and in the middle bottom here is your layers panel. So as we talk to those um, items, if you're on a tablet or a phone device, always look to the bottom to find the icons you need. So this is what a phone would look like. All of your icons scroll down here on the bottom. Now, when you come into the canvas itself, you have that same header bar that was on the home screen. So the, the um, hamburger lines here will take you back to your profile. You know you're on the canvas because it says canvas. If you are opening up a project you've worked on before, it will have a project name. Otherwise, it will say untitled. And then you can access your projects um, 
and you can save and explore. Now, when you save a project, it does go up to the cloud. And that's the beauty of working with the Cricut system and your one Cricut ID. So if you've saved a project to the cloud, when you pull out your tablet, you can grab your projects that you've saved to the cloud. And, that, and then you can access your projects throughout your different um, devices. Now on the left side here of your canvas is the design panel. And the design panel is where you put information onto the canvas. So um, when I think about the way the canvas is laid out on a desktop or a laptop, I think of it more like a book reading left to right, top to bottom, or like think of it like a clock. So if you're a visual person, you're starting at nine o'clock and you're gonna wait, work your way around the canvas to create your project. So right over here is the design panel. And within that design panel is where you can access those uh, images in Cricut Access by clicking on the images icon. When you click on this icon, it will take you to the library of Cricut images. You can also insert text onto your canvas from the design panel. So when you click on text, a text box will pop up and you can type in your text and change and edit your text underneath the um, text edit bar right here. And we'll get to do that when we go into live. Then you also have shapes. Now you can add shapes to your canvas. Um, your basic shapes are here, square, circles, things like that, and then a score line here. If you're looking for more intricate shapes, say like you're looking for a square that has rounded corners, you would look in images and find that shape in images. These are just your building blocks of shapes. Now, as you add shapes onto your canvas, your edit bar will come, come to life here. And that's um, for, for your shapes, your images, and your um, shapes and images. Text has its own um, edit bar. Sorry, <laughs> I, did, I had to think that one through. So when you, your, your um, edit bar here works for shapes and images, and it has like your basic editing tools. So changing your width and your height, adding the offset, um, flipping your, your image, changing what you're going to do to the image, that all shows up here. Now, as you add more layers onto your canvas, you sort of wake up that layers panel over on the side. And the layers panel, as you add images or shapes or text, whatever you're adding onto your uh, canvas from that left-hand side, they stack up one on top of the other on the right-hand side. So as the images stack, the most recent layer you've put onto your canvas shows up at the top and then it goes, um, it layers down from there. You'll also notice sometimes different icons are grayed out. So like on this um, sample here, a range is grayed out. And that just means that I can't arrange these two layers I have selected for one reason or another. But I could do the align, um, I could do the align icon and align my shapes on the left side and the right side. And the, um, I'm not really sure why that won't let me arrange those when I have two selected, but sometimes you just have to click off on, you, you would click onto your canvas and then select them again um, if you think you've made an error or it's not doing what you think it should do. So we'll, we can do that live too. Now, down at the bottom of your layers panel are your action icons. And the action icons do something to the layers that you've selected. So when they do something, they might slice or weld, attach, flatten, or allow for contour. Our 102, uh, 201 class, um, Actions in Design Space, we really go into more detail on um, act, slice, weld, and attach. Now further going around your canvas, so we're working our way our nine o'clock, you down here on the bottom left is the zoom bar. And this allows you to zoom in to the shapes or images that you have on your canvas 
so that you can get a better look at your detail or zoom out and get a bigger picture of your project. So just to review this, on a desktop or laptop, your design panel is op over here on your left-hand side. Then as you walk your way across, you have your header bar and your edit bar. Then on your right side, as you keep going, you have your layers panel. Underneath your layers panel are your action icons and then your zoom. Now, if you're on um, a tablet device, your design panel will be down here on the bottom left. The header and the edit bars will be in the same location. Your layers will be down in the center middle and you'll find an icon that says layers. And your action, you find an icon that says action and that gives you a pop-up window for both of those um, features there, your layers and your actions. And then if we, there's not a zoom function on a tablet device because you just can zoom in and out using your fingers. So if you wanna take a minute and go ahead and just do a screenshot of this, feel free. Um, I do find it super helpful as people are learning design space and just getting familiar with it that you learn and orient yourself to where to find the tools that you need. So if you think of this like your toolbox and you've got a tool that um, gives you text and a tool that gives you shapes and a tool that will slice things apart um, and you get familiar with where those things are, it does make it easier as you start to build out designs. Just give you a couple more seconds there. This is like the basic orientation of design space. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about the design panel here. You'll notice um, uh, if you're on a desktop or a laptop, you will have this icon that says templates. Now, if you are working on a tablet device or a mobile device, you won't have the templates. What the template is, it's basically a full size template of a finished project, a blank. So it will have your t-shirt templates from onesie all the way up to extra, extra, extra large. And this is, in, this is a valuable tool if you are making a lot of t-shirts for people of different sizes. So you have one design, you wanna size it right for a baby onesie and then size it right for an extra, extra, extra large adult or something like that. If you did, um, the baby onesie size on an extra large t-shirt, it might you know, come out looking really small. So that's what the templates are for. And then your projects are show up as an icon on your desktop or your laptop, whereas on your mobile device, it'll, it's up, I think in this area, and it's a button you click on and, and you can see in your categories, it'll be say my projects and that's how you access your projects. Now, images, this is the one spot in design space that you can access the entire library of images from Cricut. Cricut has over, I think it's over 150,000 images now, and they're broken down into categories to make it a little bit easier to find. So these highlighted categories here are ones where I start often. And if it's been a few days that I haven't been in design space, I'll check out the recently added images. Um, and then free this week is always a, a great spot to see. And if you're looking for something, you can sort of narrow down what you're looking for using these different categories here, or you can do a keyword search. So when I created this presentation, I was looking for just a simple heart to put on a travel mug. So when I sent a family member out the door, they knew I loved them. So I was looking for, you know, a heart with the words, I love you or I love you or something like that on there. So I did just a keyword search and I put in love you heart. And I came up with a good amount of results. So to narrow down my results, I filtered a little bit further using the filter tabs here on the left-hand side. So then you can filter with um, what type of project you're doing, what's the operation, will you be cutting it, will you be drawing it? You can sort of narrow it down there. You can narrow down with the image complexity. So the complexity of an image, it refers to the number of cuts 
it takes to make that image. So like a mandala design um, has a lot of complex cuts. So that would be a complex image. And then layers, is it a single layer image or multi-layer image? And then you can even narrow down by if images are designed for a certain type of material. Okay, now once you've found an image you like, you'll notice it has this little um, green flag on it with an A, which means it's included in Cricut Access or it might be free. So this image at the time I was looking for this image was free. So anybody could have used that image or it will say subscribed down here. So if you have a Cricut Access subscription, it will say subscribed or there will be a price if you're not a Cricut Access memory and you just wanna use that image, it'll have a price on it and then you can purchase that image. Now, if you don't, if you use, if you have a Cricut Access account and you use an image and let's say down the line, you decide I'm going on vacation, I'm gonna pause my Cricut Access membership um, and you want to use that image to use, if you don't have an active Cricut Access membership, it will prompt you to purchase that image. Once you've purchased that image, you can use that image as long as you have Cricut Access. I mean, as long as you have design space, sorry. Um, so once you've, if you're, if you're a la carte style, then once you've purchased that image, it's yours to use in design space. Now, if you want more information about an image, like if it's part of an image set, you click on that little italic eye in the bottom right corner, and that will give you the image name, it will give you the image number, and it will tell you to view the image sets. If you're looking for a specific image, always tap into this hashtag right here. So when you, you always want to make sure that you tap into the hashtag. I'm not sure what that means. What does that mean, Lindsay or Joy? Sophie's asking any chance that you can enlarge the size of the design space? I think, I think she wants to see the images that you're looking at like a little bit larger as if you could zoom in on your presentation. Oh, I, I wish I could. I can't do that on this one. Okay, she figured it out. All right, um, and design space is, the software. So Design Space is your software that you use. Um, Cricut Access is your membership that gives you access to all the images and the fonts and the projects. So now once you, if you want to look at a set, an image set of um, a, an image and see what else goes, happens to be, you know, part of that set, what goes with it, then you can, um, oops, I went backwards. Then you can click on view image sets and you can find a whole collection of sets of images that coordinates with what you initially selected. So while my, my idea was to use that love you heart on a, a mug for sending somebody out the door with their coffee, somebody else may be looking for bridal shower things or wedding things. And then you come across a whole collection of images that are intended to, to work together and create multiple, multiple projects. Now, once you've selected an image, you'll notice it has this green box around it and it shows up into your, um, your tray, your queue, if you will. So you can line up a whole bunch of images along this row here. You can line up 10 or 20 images, however many images you need to work with. And then when you're ready, you insert that onto your canvas. Now, I will give you a little warning. I did line up and see um, how many images I could line up and I could not get to too many, but I did find when I went to or insert those images, it took my computer a long time to upload all that information. So I kind of I kind of keep it around five images at a time that I'll pull onto my canvas and, and work with. But once I bring an image onto my canvas, I get these four quick little edit icons on my image. And what the quick edit icons do is they, they either you can delete that image completely with that little X, you can rotate your image, you can enlarge the image. And if the image comes in um, with the, the lock on, this is the lock here, 
if it comes in locked, that means your proportions are locked. So when you enlarge that image, as you enlarge it, the width or the height, it enlarges at the same time. So your width and your height will enlarge the same. So it, bring in a square and you keep it locked, it stays a square. Bring in a square and you unlock your proportions, you can then make a rectangle. And that's what the little lock is for. Now, the next step, once you've decided your image, you've sized your image, you're ready to make it, you go back up to your header bar and you say, make it. Then once the, you can look at your prepare screen, you can see the position of the image you're cutting and you can get some basic image about the um, basic information about the image you're cutting. For example, you're cutting it on a mat, you're cutting it out of material size 12 by 12 and you're ready to go. Now, if you are using, I usually cut my material down, so I don't always cut it on a material size 12 by 12, I may cut it on a material four by five, but I don't change that material size. I'm lazy like that. Um, so you don't have to change that material size. The mat is important that you're cutting it on a mat. Okay, and then when you go to your last step to send it to your machine to cut, you'll select, make sure your machine is turned on and selected. Um, and then you select your materials and you can either look at popular materials or do browse all materials and you can even favorite material. So if you always are cutting with glitter iron on, that may be one of your favorite materials. And so you just favorite that and then you always have access to it. Once you've selected all those things, then, um, oops, then your load tools and materials will, will light up and your, the flashing light on your machine will start to go to load and unload your materials. So that is an overview of design space, how to pick an image, how to resize an image, and then how to send the, the image to your machine. Now we get to go actually into design space and design an image. And I see some questions coming in. Thank you, Joy and Lindsay for keeping answering those questions. Are there any that I, sh I can answer live before we move on? Um, let's see. There are lots of questions about images right now. Um, so we're, we're going down into the angel policy and kind of talking about the angel policy a little bit. Um, I think, I think you should go ahead and go on and we'll okay. answer these questions. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Let me, um, go back and I'll share my screen again and we'll go right into design space. Now, I think I have something I was working on earlier, so you'll have to bear with me while I go back to my home, um, I'm gonna go into the home here. And so this is, if you're on a desktop or laptop, your home screen pops up. If you are on a tablet device, you automatically go into the canvas. But here's that carousel I was talking about that switches around and rotates. Um, and your projects are here, like my projects I've created all show up here. If I wanna look at some playlist and then all the projects as you go down seasonal, um, all kinds of fun stuff. All right. Now, um, I did see a question about an upgrade to design space. And you'll notice up here in your upper left corner, um, it will tell you what version of design space you're on. And it, it's not unusual every month or so to have an update to design space that will roll out. And then you just do those updates. And it doesn't always change the look of design space. It may just you know, be a new feature they've added or taken away or shuffled something around or just fixed a bug. All right, so once you're ready to start a new project, we go into um, make it and we come onto the canvas. Now on your canvas, what we're gonna do first is measure your blank. So actually, let me stop this for one second. Today, I'm gonna be working on this tumbler um, and this is one of the Michaels tumblers. I love, I love these things. I swear I can I make them for every season. <laughs> um, but the tumbler is nice. It, it's just a good flat surface to work with and they're, they're super fun. So whatever blank you're working with today, go ahead and measure your 
the space, what I like to do is I hold it in my hand and then I measure between my thumb and my finger. So I just measure across how much, how wide my image can be. And this tells me my image can be, I have it upside down. I think my image can be about four and a half inches is, is as wide as I would want to go. Now, the reason I do that is that when I go into design space, I like to have, a, I like to give myself basically a square that I can work with a rectangle, whatever shape I'm working with that will let me, um, that will kind of keep, keep my guide guardrails up. So I'm going to add a shape. Now, first, the way that, um, we're gonna do this is I'll do something and then I'll, so you can just watch me do it and then we'll go back and do it together each step. So my first step is to add a shape and I'm going to select a square and then I'll change the size of the square to be the width of my, my mug. So the width of my design will be four and a half inches. The height of my mug is seven inches. So I'm going to unlock the proportion so that I can change the height to seven inches. And this is just gives me an idea of how much space I have to work with on my on my um, vinyl sticker that I'm going to create to put on my mug. Now, OK, so let's go. Let's everybody do this with me. We're going to go to the design panel. We're going to select the shapes icon. We're going to select a square. Then we're going to go up to the edit bar and change our size. So whatever your width of your design is, if you need to unlock your proportions to get a rectangle, go ahead and unlock your proportions. And there's, your, there's the shape that you have to work with for your design. Okay, now once we've done that, we're gonna go to the images and select an image to work with. So in your design panel, and everybody needs to kind of follow me on this one together. So in your design panel, go ahead and click on the icon images. Now it doesn't always open in the same spot. Sometimes it will open where I left off or it will open in my keyword search window or it will open in um, just what's popular kind of a window. So, it, so everybody may open in a different, your images may open in a different spot. So what we wanna do is go up to the top there and click on that and get to this screen here that shows you all the different highlighted categories and things that you can um, narrow down your search with. And we're gonna click in free this week. And this way, everybody, can, and I'm going to click out my search. This is actually what we're searching for. Um, but this way, everybody can, can work on the design with using an image that's free this week. So once you're in the free this week image, you can really scroll through, scroll, scroll through and see lots of different images and designs that are available for you to work with. There's cards. I, it just, it varies and changes. I never know what I'm going to see. Um, but this week, let's do a search for rise and shine because I'm making a um, coffee, a co uh, like a tumbler. So I, you know, this is a good thing for having in the morning. So I'm looking for something I can do in the morning and look at all these choices that come up. I can do a rise and shine with a solid fill, an outline fill. I can do a rise and shine without the sparkles. Um, and then you can, you have like a rise and shine and four different layered colors, another one with script, and then just the word shine. So for our project today, I'm going to go ahead and take the rise and shine with the sparkles. But I really like this design because no matter which design you choose, I think it, there's one for everybody. So go ahead and click on, if you're using a, a desktop or a laptop, left click on the rise and shine so that that green box shows up around the image and that image is in your queue down at the bottom. And now let's add that to the canvas. So we're going to add rise and shine to our canvas. Now, as that comes onto your canvas, you'll see in your layers panel, you now have the image layer 
and your square layer if you, if you added that shape. Now you can just take the image that we brought in and resize that image to be the size of the image that you need. So the width of my image was four and a half inches. So I'm gonna change my width to 4.5 inches. And now you can see it's resized it and I've kept the proportion on. So it, it keeps the image the same, it keeps the size proportional changes. So let's go ahead and, um, do we have time? Let's go ahead and I want everybody, I'm gonna go, if you're with, if you're, with me, stay with me. If you're missing the image, let's just go back in. I'm gonna show you again how to find the image. So you click on images and it will take you wherever it takes you. Click up here on the category, word, the word category, and it will take you into this keyword search category here. We're going to click on free this week. And in the keyword box up at the top, type in the words rise and shine. And then you'll get a couple choices here. Bring whichever one you'd like to use, bring that onto your canvas by clicking on it. The green box shows up. It shows up in your queue at the bottom here. Add to canvas and there it is. And then all you need to do is resize it. So we're just gonna resize this one to 4.5 inches. And let's see how that looks on, how that would look on my, on my Tumblr. Now, if I wanted to, um, I feel like if you didn't mind these little sparkles, if they went around to the side underneath your fingers, you could make this a little bit bigger if you wanted to and let that kind of, that, that those little sparkles might be hidden under your fingers, but that may not be um, a problem for you. Or if you want to go smaller and have that really, you know, maybe have a little quarter of an inch from your fingers, then you can do that and you just resize it that way. So you can resize it specifically the size you want using your edit bar, or you can resize the design um, using the, the arrow here that pulls it in and out. Okay, now, if everybody's with me, we've got, I'm gonna, ch I changed mine to 3.75. And you'll notice when it comes onto my canvas, it comes on as a black, um, a black image. But if I were cutting this out of yellow cart, yellow vinyl or purple vinyl or anything like that, it really wouldn't matter per se what color my design was because when I send it to my machine, I'm going to get to see it in that color. But if you want to change the color so you can see, well, how would this look in purple vinyl on a, a light gray tumbler? So we can change both images colors. To do that, you go to the edit bar up top and in this window where it says operation, click on the solid square and a drop down menu drops down with your colors that you can choose from. Now it has some basic colors to start with, or you can do more advanced colors here and, and really kind of go dial in your, your colors a little bit more accurately if you wanted to. And then we'll pit select this, this layer here and we'll change that color. I'm using um, a turquoise vinyl today. So it's a little bit more green than this, not that green. Here we go, let's get a light, nice little green color going here. So I can just change my color that way using the advanced feature. And then I can bring that over to my square and oh, that's gonna look nice. So once you, that just, the reason I show you that is to give you a visual since we're all, a lot of us are visual people. Um, I'll give you that visual of how to do that. Now, when we go to, to make this design, we won't be making uh, the square. We, we don't need to cut that because that actually just represents your blank. So you can go to your layers panel with me and then click on the eye and cross that out and that will cross out and it'll hide that image. So it's still on the canvas. It's still there. You can pull it, pull it up and access it later, but it, it does go away. Now, somebody's asking, Sandy's saying, how do you change the square to a rectangle? So Sandy, you pull in a shape and I brought in the square and you change your, you lock your 
you unlock your proportion so that you can change the proportion of your shape. And then that just lets you change without being restrained by, um, by keeping it the same width as the height. Okay, so let's hide that. I'm gonna hide that rectangle again, and I'm ready to make it. So when I click on make it, it will take me to my prepare screen. And it will ask me, am I cutting it on a mat or will I be cutting it without a mat? If I were using smart materials, I would select without a mat, but I'm just, I'm using um, a vinyl today. And here's my image on my mat. And it's, it's about four inches by three inches. So I'll probably have a little piece of vinyl that's a five by four size vinyl to make sure I get it cut on there. But that looks really good. And then I'm going to hit continue. Now, if I were to be cutting this out of iron-on vinyl, this is where you can go over to the side panel and mirror the image so that you can cut it on iron-on vinyl. But today we're just cutting it out of regular vinyl, so I don't need to mirror it. Okay, so then I hit continue. Then it shows up in my to make screen and give that so I can select my materials and send it over to my machine. So when I browse all materials, I'm going to be looking for my vinyl. And I just type in the words, browse all materials, I'm gonna type in the word vinyl. And I'll be using a premium vinyl today. That's actually the color, I think it's a removable matte vinyl that I'll be using, this one here. Now, normally I would, um, I would, do this with a, if you're working on a tumbler or something like that, you do want to use a permanent vinyl. Um, I just happened to grab the removable, vin removable vinyl today. Um, but if you're, if you're making this to give to somebody or to use yourself, you do want to use a permanent vinyl. Okay, so then now I normally leave my default pressure at at the default because Cricut has done so much extensive testing on the weight and the pressure needed to cut that they've got it down to a science. So I trust them that it's gonna work out okay. And I'll show you what to do if it doesn't. Then it tells you to load your materials. So um, I can either use a fine point blade, which is what it tells me. And I've got that loaded into my machine, machine and my mat light is blinking. Oh, that's it, Louisa, that's a good question. And I'm gonna answer that. Louisa is asking when to use removable vinyl or permanent vinyl or iron-on. I'm confused. It is confusing. Um, when you think about like using a removable vinyl or a permanent vinyl, think about, do, am I, do I want this to last on here for as long as possible? So if you're doing a tumbler, you definitely wanna use permanent vinyl. Um, this one is a hand wash tumbler, so it's gonna get hand washed. Um, but I do have it, it. I recommend hand washing. If you put vinyl on anything, I do recommend hand washing it. But removable vinyl really does allow you to remove it. So if you're doing something for home decor or a party that you know you, you only want for a temporary, then you want to do something that's removable so you can peel it off later. Um, and then iron on is you use iron on when you want to iron on your design and using um, an iron, like if you're doing a t-shirt or something like that, you might wanna use iron on. Now, once you've decided on your vinyl, you wanna make sure that you have handy the right transfer tape. So this is, this is a premium vinyl and it's a permanent glossy. So it marries up with the regular standard transfer tape. If you're using a vinyl that has a texture to it, like this shimmer vinyl, you want to use a vinyl that has strong grip because the, the shimmer vinyl here with the texture, you definitely need something a little bit more to grab that um, vinyl and cut and, and hold that vinyl for you. So that's when you would use a difference. And it, you will notice if you grab the wrong one, you will, you will figure it out pretty quickly. And I've done it, we've all done it. Um, so when you, I always remove things from my mat by pulling my mat off of whatever it is I'm removing from it. So I'll take my little plastic piece off of there. And then I have my final here. And it's great because it has the squares on the back 
So if you don't have a paper trimmer, you can just use scissors and the squares and trim your design to the right, to the right size. Or you can put the whole 12 inches on there. I just tend to go, I find it easier to go smaller um, and, and cut it from something smaller. So I'm trimming it down four inches and then I'll trim it down five inches. Now, a lot of people ask, well, what do you do with all those extra pieces you have? I actually tuck them underneath my self-healing mat um, and I, I pull them out when I need them, when I need that color or something, I'll just tuck it under there or I put it in a little bin and I have a bin set up for removable vinyl and permanent vinyl and iron on. Okay, so you just line this up Onto your, onto your mat and you want to line it up across the top and then down the side. And then we're just going to put it in and make sure it goes underneath the wheels here, underneath these bars and on the side. When your light's flashing, you just click the light and it'll go in. Now, while that's cutting, I'll answer Diane's question. She's asking, how do I know which blade is in the machine? So the um the fine point blade is this silver blade here and if you have um the deep blade is this black one i always have to think am i saying that right yeah the deep blade is the black one and for your explorer there's also a fabric one which is a pink blade if you're on a maker you'll definitely be able to tell the difference of your blades because they're um, they're different carriages, but they also have a number, Very, right? It's very, I don't know if I can, I don't think I can get that so you can see it, but they have a number on there um, that will tell you which blade it is that you're using. So that's how you know your blades. Now, I do like to keep my mats as clean as possible because um, they, they that saves their longevity. Um, so I keep a little pack of lint-free, cleaners, um, alcohol, no lint. And I just, after I clean it, um, if it's been out for a little bit, if it has some debris on it, I can just wipe it down. And initially you, it doesn't feel the stick on it, but then it, once it dries, the stick is back on there. And then I can put my um, plastic cover on it and it's good to go. Now, if you're worried about getting it, if you're worried that did it cut through all the way or not, you're not sure, you can put your, run your finger over it and you can feel the cut lines. If you're concerned your, your machine didn't cut, you're using a new kind of vinyl, just before you unload your machine, hit the play button again and it will cut your um, design exactly on the right lines. Just don't hit the unload. But I can feel that mine cut. I could even um, give it a test and make sure that it cut out and I'm ready to unload my design. Now, again, I do turn my mat over. I put my vinyl down on my work table and get just a little corner of it. And then you hold that down and peel your mat off like that. Now, again, I just use a little wipe. It's, it's lint-free, no alcohol. Um, it's just a little wipe. So you can just use a little lint-free with some water. If it gets really messy, like you've left it out and it's got lots of dust on it, maybe some cat hair or dog hair, kid stuff, just use um, Dawn and like a little brush and go in circles to clean it off that way. But even though I keep mine pretty clean, I still get little grubby spots on it. So now you'll see it doesn't have stick on it. And I'm just gonna set that up there to dry. And before class is over, I'll show you it's sticky again. Okay, so now we're going to weed out our design. And to weed out your design, you just need this little weeding tool here. It's got a hook on it. And um, so that's not talk like a pirate day. You just grab a little corner of your design and you can start weeding. So I like to sort of rotate and rock my design um, from a corner and weed it that way so that it comes off nice and gently and softly. If you're having to tug at your weeding to come off or if it's not coming off smoothly, 
you might just check your blade and make sure that there's no, um, there's no little pieces of debris in your blade or anything like that to keep it, to keep it clean. So I just keep my weeding tool handy and I just use it to follow along and push off things, make sure that my eyes are dotted and they stay on the design. And then once you've done that, we're just gonna pull, weed out these little pieces in the middle. Just pop those out. So if you ever are weeding and you're having a hard time seeing your light, your lines, um, you can put your weeded piece up on a windowsill, up on not a windowsill, up on the window and you'll, it's easier to see the lines. Or Cricut has this awesome bright pad, which um, it, does, it doesn't require to be plugged in. So you can use that anywhere. So that's, that's really nice. If you have lots of big projects, maybe you're going on a road trip and you're weeding along the way, you could do it with that. So that is super helpful. And then, so we just weed these out. All right, so there's our design and we've done the weeding. What can you use to get the, you know, what can you use to get the weeded piece off your fingers? I actually usually keep um, a lint brush. So as I'm weeding and they're on my tool, I just put them on the lint brush. I just hadn't pulled that out for this class, but that's usually what I do is I just weed off of my, um, weed off of that. Now I will take a little piece of um, transfer tape here to put onto my design. And I'm going to use what I call um, the hinge technique. So what that does, I'm going to basically be creating a door hinge here so I can make sure that I get my design on my transfer tape using the lines. So again, that's why I love working on the gridded background here of the self-healing mat, definitely makes it easier. So we're just gonna pull this open. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is first I'll put my transfer tape along a line here. I'll line up a piece of my transfer tape. Now, your transfer tape does not have to be the same size as your design. You can definitely be a little bit bigger. Can't be smaller unless you know, you, you're experienced. I do sometimes miss a corner of it or something like that, but as a beginner, it's, you're, you're better off giving yourself more space to work with than less. Okay, so I've got um, the line of my transfer tape is lined up with the line on my mat. So I'm just gonna turn my transfer tape back and line up my design on that edge. And then when I bring this over, I know that it's going to be, um, my design is lined up on the grids of the mat, of the transfer tape. And I just use um, my wedge here to push out any extra little air bubbles or anything like that and ensure my vinyl sticks to the transfer tape. You don't have, if you don't have a wedge handy, you can certainly use um, a credit card or gift card or anything like that to sort of push that down and, and push it onto your thing. You just kind of want a semi-soft edge there. So we just push that back like this. And then um, I peel off my back of my transfer tape, much like I peel off the back of my mat. So you just peel the transfer tape off. And I can, again, I will kind of roll it and rock it. Yeah. Rock and roll. And if it sticks, I can just push my finger down and roll my transfer tape off of it like that. So now my backing is off of my transfer tape. I have my design and I can use both my wedge and my um, my wedge and my lint brush to hold my mug where it is. You can also use um, a face cloth and wipe the, and hold that down with that. And we just are going to 
line the top of my transfer tape up with the top of my design and put the center down first, like a taco. So put your center down first and then you can put one side down and work it in and make sure you have no air bubbles while holding the other side up. And then we're gonna slide this side down. And the, the name of the game is keeping air bubbles out. And if you get air bubbles in your design, sometimes you can go back and lift it up with your weeding tool or worst case scenario, like if you, you know, just had one that you couldn't get out and it was on just a portion of your design, you could take that off and recut that design. But usually using that taco method and carefully working my finger across the design as I take my transfer tape off, it does come off easier. If your design, if your blank is, has like a taper to it, you can trim your transfer tape so that it will curve on that trim of the, on the curve of your design, of your mug. Words are difficult right now. All right, so there we go. Now I do keep my transfer tape backing because you can reuse your transfer tapes until they don't work anymore. Probably like five, six, seven times and just keep that backing on it and you're, you're good to go. There's my mug, super fun. And my mat is now sticky again. It's got, it's got it cling to my, there we go. So now I've got my stick back on my mat. And so I'll just put my cover back on that to keep it from um, getting any extra dust or debris on it. There we go. All right. That is our design. Are there any, oops, before we completely close out, I know we're, we had a couple minutes left. If there were any other questions that I can answer um, for anybody or anything I wanted to go, anybody wanted me to go over. I'm still here. Because <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any, oh, we don't have any open questions. Okay. Here is one though, Sabrina just asked, do you ever iron on mugs? Oh, Sabrina, that's a good question. I don't typically iron on like ceramic or mugs, but I will tell you my little boo sign there, that's a wooden sign. I ironed on that. And these little signs above me, which are <laughs> the bats <laughs> and the pumpkins, those are canvas. And I ironed on that. And then these guys here, these were ironed on as well. But you could use your mug press. That's what I was gonna say. So this, <laughs> yes, if you wanted to iron on, you could use a mug press and do something. Oops, got, I've got too much glare. Mom is like, if you can read this, mom is off duty. That's very yeah, cute. So that's, yeah, I would use um, infusible ink to put it onto um, a mug press. And we do have. Um, we do have a video on the on the mug maker and just a sneak peek of upcoming classes are we have a cocoa cart class coming up in three weeks. Um, I think it's three weeks and it's going we're going to show I'll show the mug press on that class that's going to be a super fun fun one. Yeah. All right, Kesley, you pick a question. Okay, so Anna says, so are the vinyl sheet equal to printer ink cartridges? I knew so just wondering. So no, <laughs> vinyl, when you think about it, a printer sheet, I, I'm thinking like you're, you're thinking of printing out something and then bringing it over to cut it. It's not the same type of material as your vinyl. It's completely different, different type of material and different procedure. Um, so somebody said that they signed into their laptop onto their iPad, but didn't see projects created on my laptop. What am I doing wrong? I actually have the answer to that question. All right. Unless you do, Kez. For it. You, it's very often the best practice if you're moving from one device to another device is to close out your Cricut design space and then re reopen your design space and give it a chance to refresh and collect all the work that you did in one place and bring it over to the next place. So you just kind of have to think about 
if I've done it here, my tablet has no idea that I was working on my desktop <laughs> and close it down and give it a chance to see what you did. It also on a tablet device, it gives you the option to look at projects you saved in the cloud and projects you've saved on the device. So make sure you have um, that you're looking for projects in the cloud to find your projects. Um, and if anybody, I didn't, I don't have this as a project, but if you wanted to find um, my other projects, you could do a, a search for me in the community for Kesley Anderson. And like my boo sign is there and um, our little pumpkins, which I got, all this is from Michael's. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how to answer Deb's question. Deb, sorry, I'm not using a computer. It's on my phone. I have the image in design space. There an image at the top. There is not an image at the top of the screen. Not sure, but we can answer Lydia's question. Okay. In the last few minutes here. She would like to know, how would you be able to make a large banner or what is the biggest size on Explore 2? So Explore 2 works with 11 and a half inch wide by 24 inch long or 23.5 inch long material. So if you were just to make a banner with that, that's, that's the size that you could make, but you could piece it together. Like I, I made um, signs that were 36 inches long and just pieced it together. So you could, you would just piece it together. If you're using um, Explore 3 or Maker 3 and you're using smart materials, then you can go as long as nine feet long and 12 inches wide to make a banner. And Brittany's asking, how do you take images off your iPhone and bring it to design space? So Brittany, to do that um, on the left side of, or actually on the bottom icon, click on the upload icon and then select your image to upload it into design space. All right, and then um, Marby's asking, why is the strong grip transfer tape peeling off the paint? It's because it's probably too strong and it will peel up your paint. It's tricky. Do you have any suggestions, Kesley? Um, I, I've never had it peel off my paint, to be honest with you. So I guess it just depends on what the surface is. If you're, if it, it if you don't have to use strong grip transfer tape, maybe just try regular transfer tape, um, would be my suggestion, or maybe, depending on what design you're doing, you could make a stencil and then paint your design on using um, the using a stencil vinyl to create your design rather than vinyl. Um, you also might could use the wet technique where you um, use a water, put like a little spritz of water down before you put your vinyl down, but that takes more time because then you have to really let it dry. So that I do if I'm doing something overnight and I'm not sure that would help in this instance. Yeah, I think testing it in, the, in a corner, see if it pulls up your paint and then maybe the paint needs to dry a little longer would be another suggestion. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, and maybe put a, a coating on it. Deb is asking, I'm trying to print an uploaded image on my Joy. I keep getting project incompatible. This project is not supported by your current machine selection to resolve okay and adjust affected layers. So um, Cricut Joy doesn't support print then cut. The Explore and the Makers will do print then cut, um, but the Cricut Joy doesn't support print then cut. So if you just wanna print an image from Design Space, select your machine as the Explore, and then you can just print the image, but you won't be able to come back to the Joy and then cut. So it sort of depends on what, if your end goal is to do a print then cut, Explore or Maker will do that for you. Um, if you just wanna print something, then you can just change your machine. You can fib a little bit and so alter your machine. You know, the other time that I get that, that um, answer is when I've created a design that is too long or too wide to fit in the Cricut Joy, she might mean print in terms of like cutting. So if your image is too big for the mat, it will come back and say, you have to adjust the layers, which means you need to get them inside the four and a half inches. Yes. yes. 
So M. Born saying, will you do a class on infusible ink? We don't have a planned class coming up on infusible ink, but that um, if you want to learn how to use infusible ink, I would definitely say take our cocoa cart class coming up in October, we will be using infusible ink there. And on the Michael's um, YouTube channel is the, I've used infusible ink in the mug press class. So that's a good one. Okay, I think, how are we on time? I think we are almost out of time. Okay, I see one more question. Anna is saying, she's trying to conflict, con to clarify. Ink printers create colors for you, like primary yellow, red, blue, and black. So your vinyl that you use, Anna, is um, opaque. Uh, it's not opaque. It, so you can't layer one color, like you can't layer green, blue on top of yellow to get a green vinyl. You would just use a green vinyl to get that green color. So if you had a design, like let's say like my little rainbow back here, each of those colors is a different type of iron-on vinyl. So I cut each arc out of a different color of vinyl and then put them on to make that rainbow. And same with my little bats and, and the pumpkins. Each of those is a different um, color of vinyl, but then put, put uh, together as one. All right, well, I think we answered as many questions as we could and staying within our time as best as we can. We'd like to thank you all very, very, very much for coming to class today, for spending some time learning about your Cricut machine. Please feel free to go back to the michaels.com website at slash classes and look for our future classes. Kesley has a lot of really good project classes coming up. Um, so check them out sign up and we'd love to see you in more classes. Thank you, Kesley, for a great class. Thank you so much for having me. Everyone enjoy your day.